Hello, welcome back to Silver Silence Shooting Center. And this feels like weeks since our last YouTube video, obviously because of coronavirus and not being able to open as a range. So it's been a while. So this one is primarily to sum up some of our videos we've been looking at in terms of choice of rifle for IPSC mini rifle. Now, those of you who have bothered to watch the videos or frankly care, I've been shooting a Smith & Wesson 1522. This one to be exact for the last 10 years, nine years or so. And it's a good gun. It's performed very well, very happy with it. As you can see, it's heavily modified from a standard Smith & Wesson 1522. And it's been the, the gun and arguably the go-to gun for the majority of the competitors in mini rifle in the UK for some years. Now, my reason for changing is not anything wrong with that particular gun, but more partly from my own uh, choice of performance. Uh, obviously my main business is building race cars, so we're obviously looking at ways of improving things. But also there are ways about the gun that I didn't like, uh, and I looked for somewhere else I could uh, gain performance, but also uh, to try and get an edge on, on my competitors. Now this hunt, hunt has been going on for the best part of two years, and I've worked with a couple of manufacturers and I've used quite a lot of guns, and I've come to the conclusion where we are now, which is hence a purpose this video. <clears throat> now, one of the criticisms of the Smith & Wesson is very lightweight, it's a polymer gun, so it's very lightweight. And so a lot of people uh, don't like the fact it is so light uh, that it doesn't feel like a real gun in their regard. Now I never personally got that, once you put the optics on it weights up quite nicely. But I did have chance to play with a couple of full metal guns and I, I did get it to some extent. The capacity to overswing your target when you're shooting a very lightweight rifle was there. And you, like all people, train around it and you get used to it. And then so I started looking at uh, all metal guns. Now there are a few out there, um, but I, after testing a few of them, came to the conclusion that I quite like the Chris DMK, it used to be called Defiant which is this one, <clears throat> and as you can see, it's got optics on it. Um, I, again, really very impressed with it. Um, again, need a bit of modification to make it work really well, but straight out of the box, it was a good gun, worked very well. With the heavier weight of it was a benefit, um, together with the uh, fact you could use standard AR parts to modify it, made it a lot cheaper to modify and also wider range of things you can use, and been very happy with it. Um, but really, it's an AR platform, and for me personally, uh, being a left-handed shooter, it wasn't perfect. Uh, the way in which the uh, architecture of the gun works in terms of the ergonomics of the safeties, the racking mechanism, uh, even the, the trigger, uh, wasn't really uh, suited for, what I believe, left-handed shooters personally. But also, it tied in with some research that we have been doing here at Silver Shooting Center and also myself personally over in the States. We are fortunate enough uh, to work with some of both the UK's and worldwide's uh, most sophisticated police forces in terms of training uh, for counter-terrorism style work. Now, before we go any further, this has nothing to do with practical shooting. This is a different part of our business. But as a result of working with these people who are very highly trained, I came to the conclusion that the similarities between their training regime and practical shooting, specifically mini rifle in the UK, were fairly similar. Now, before we go further, first things first, they're not the same, okay? One is a job, very highly respected, heavily trained. The other is a sport, which we enjoy basically running around, shooting guns at it in a shooting range. But the similarities in terms of the distances and the kinds of environments where the counter-terrorism style police work and a standard practical course of fire in the UK were very similar. Now this is quite specific. Mini rifle around the world is shot slightly differently in different places and it all depends on space. In different areas, different countries, much more space, they tend to be much longer ranges. Norway, for example, and Swedish countries, a mini rifle match there will regularly get 120 meters because they have that space. Now in the UK, Silverstone Shooting Centre is the only range where we can stretch out to 100 meters. So the majority of practical shooting in the UK is in shorter ranges, shorter distances, sometimes indoor ranges. And that lends itself very well to a more compact way of handling a firearm. Now, the way I look at it, if you look at my DMK, <clears throat> it's a, a long firearm with a 16-inch barrel. And this is by far the most 
uh, accepted style of mini rifle in the UK for shooting. And it is shot primarily with, most people with, an overgrip. So the thumb goes over the top of the barrel to control muzzle flip. But also, the other benefit of overgrip, which I tend to recommend it, is it gives you a lateral movement of traversing from target to target, and that works very well. The downside to this is that that function really works very well at longer distance, where you are looking for lateral movements. It's very small lateral movements where your primary muscle group, forearm, is more in control. So if you're looking at a target at 120 meters away, and there's another target to the left of it, that movement is better controlled by that muscle group, which is why the overgrip, or C grip, you know, call it, is very popular for practical rifle shooting, where they shoot up to 300 meters. So, as a result of that, like all fashion things, we follow that process behind, and as a result of that, uh, it is a, a, a useful stance to take, especially for an AR-style platform. Now, the downside to that is, is that a lot of our shooting in the UK being shorter distance and in narrower positions of course of fire, you're better off, and this is an opinion to some extent, of adopting a more upright position, hence using things like uh, angled or vertical foregrips. Now, if you look at any CQB, which sounds like close quarters battle training, which I have done quite a lot with the police, they are uptight, very close, short stocks, vertical foregrip shooting style. It is literally bunched up, elbows down, tucked in. And the reason why they follow this, a couple of things that don't apply to us as practical shooters, but a couple do. The things that don't apply to us is that they run short stocks because they tend to wear body armor. You know, the, the people they are going and, and training to, to shoot want to shoot in the back. We shoot bits of paper, so we don't worry about battle arm, bottle body armor, so that's not a problem. But other than that, the position of moving a rifle is at much shorter distances. And also, it's around barricades. It's around doorways. It's around door jams. Now, for practical mini rifle perspective, it's behind barricades. It's underneath things. It's around things. And the reason why military and police adopt this position is that it means that, and first of all, your elbows drop gives you a solid shooting position, but it locks your shoulders. So it means your movement is far more shoulder orientated, okay, which is a very solid shooting platform. Now, it doesn't mean a longer distance you can't use this, but a longer distance you do lose some accuracy of movement sideways. But in shorter distances, so up to 50 meters, say, that's a good solid position. Now, I've looked at that very keen and I'm a big learner of these things. Um, and I've spent a lot of time with these guys. And we've realized that our sport and our training for our sport and the equipment for our sport does have some similarities of use for their very serious purpose of obviously uh, going into a room and, and, and taking out bad guys. So fast forward on from there, uh, looking with that in the back of mind, I've been looking for a rifle, which I thought would help replicate and deal with those problems. And I did I think a fine one I found in the Chris Vector, which I've, if you look at some of the videos I've done, we've been showing how we were looking at and developing it. And over coronavirus, just because our range is shut to public doesn't mean I can't use it. So we've spent quite some time now, um, something like 25,000 rounds and two rifles, and developed what we think is going to be, in my view, a game changing style of rifle for practical mini rifle. Now, first of all, that doesn't necessarily mean the AR platform is dead. Far from it. It will still be the dominant rifle type. And I think, for, especially for rifle shooting with longer distance, the shooting position is still by far and away the best one to adopt. But for shorter distance and practical mini rifle, especially in countries like us where we have smaller ranges and smaller distances, the position of adopting that tucked in position and a more, a more upright shooting stance, I think will pay dividends to people. So for the Chris, vector. That's your shoot position. I have the stock tucked right in. My second hand, uh, supporting hand, is tucked right in and I'm on the gun and traversing it in that way. It does take some time to relearn what you do. Okay, after spending half my time doing this, the first thing I'm doing is picking up the gun and I'm, and I'm over gripping it. <laughs> and to go back into this position does take some time. Unfortunately, that's what I've had. Um, but it meant that my traversing from target to target was quite direct and much faster. Okay. Now, this isn't for everybody. I'm just explaining how I think of it. And I shoot left-handed. So what I've done over the last few weeks and months is go through the gun in some detail to see what 
I could change in terms of would, would make it perfect for a practical me rifle side. And I've decided to go through this in a video. Couple of specific things that have been great for me personally is the fact that it being, me being a left-handed shooter, all of the controls of the gun are on the supporting hand. So from a right-handed perspective, same thing applies. Your magazine release is here. Your action forward is here. Everything is controlled by your supporting hand. So once you get used to the idea this hand stays still, and then you use this hand to do other things, it, it works very well. So from a left-handed perspective, I actually now pick up the gun with the supporting hand. That's how I carry it. I pick it up from a table that way. I traverse around a range that way. Okay, my hand is always on the respective buttons. And an extra benefit is I'm nowhere near the trigger. So if I'm carrying a gun one-handed, as you would do normally, the temptation to slip that trigger finger is quite high. Now I'm carrying it there, can't really be disqualified for a trigger on finger because there's nowhere near it. So that's a sidebar. Now we have worked, this is obviously a fairly modified Chris Vector. Um, some of this um, will be hopefully releasing to people to buy themselves. Some of this will not be. <laughs> uh, we've also made our own different forehand. Um, this is primarily because Chris still haven't got their own ones out of the shops yet, worth waiting to come in. Um, we've obviously cut the barrel down, 12 inches. I fitted one of our Hera muzzle brakes. I fitted my usual optics of being an aim point secondary on a mount zero to 10 meters and my EOTech XPS2 zero to 25 meters. And I've also added on a laser, which is zero to five meters for hip shooting, uh, which we rarely use, but if you have the opportunity to course of fire to start a course of fire with a target right in front of you, opportunity to do it quickly from a hip fire position is quite high. And again, quite unique to this kind of gun and what we can do with it. Other things we have done, which are in development at the moment, is that we have a different extractor in this thing, uh, which we've worked with a local company in the UK, and also different firing pin, titanium firing pin. Uh, the extractor, and there's still a little bit of work to do, but the idea is we'll release those as a constant of competition parts. But the big difference, and the reason why I've waited until now before we've done this particular video, is these puppies, okay? 30 round magazines. Now, prior to that, the gun only shipped with a 10 round magazine and we've been waiting, and I've been, I've put nearly 7,000 rounds through this thing on a 10 round magazine. So trust me, I couldn't get these fast enough. I'm causing agony. Uh, and that's fact life. So these came only this week, very recently, and we've already put three and a half thousand rounds through five of these, okay? Not a single issue, okay? Not one. Uh, the downside with the Smith & Wesson, and also applies to DMK, is that the Smith & Wesson magazine is the best one to use, but it wears out quite quickly. The, the feed lips are plastic and they don't seem to last too long. The plastic used on the Chris Vector 30 round mags uh, just seems a lot more solid. Okay, so whilst I've only done a few thousand rounds, there's not really much for test. Thus far, we haven't had any problems where the failure to feed has been caused by the lips not holding the, the, round, the cartridge properly and it skips into the back of the chamber. And the only issues we've had in this would be fair to extract which is why we do it as a, a competition extractor. And that's me being picky. You know, with the, with the gun we had, and 9,000 rounds through it, not a single FTE. But obviously with the competition being a bit more stressful on the gun, especially loading and unloading, um, that's what we've gone to look at. Now these, I have to say, really do. It's an empty gun, empty magazine. I'm also in our gun room, so no one getting here because it's a steel box. Completely changed the gun, both in look, feel, and also what you can do with it. It really is great fun. Uh, just chuck a 30 round mag in there, one with one of the pipe. Not many courses of fire require more than 30 rounds, except the ones here that I'm quite mean about designing. And it works spectacularly well. But all things in life, there's no point having a thermo magazine unless you can carry it. So we have developed this. It is a specific magazine holder for the Chris Vector. Uh, we've done this again with a local company uh, that we'll be releasing uh, as a kit of parts for people, as a competition person. One in. And second one in. Great, 60 rounds, plus in the mag, plus in the gun, you walk around with 90 rounds. Not many course of fire gonna need that many. But it's uh, done with a company called Dorset Blades, a Dorset Custom Blades company in the UK. May do our design, uh, both in terms of the style of it and also with different multiple looks, locks onto belts. So this will be coming available soon as well. But the question is going to, why have we spent all this time developing a gun which typically doesn't look like a practical mini rifle firearm. 
And the reasons for this are sort of fewfold. Number one, I think it looks cool. Okay, I'll put that on a table right now. When I first saw this in the movies, uh, the Chris Vector uh, as a gun, I thought, blimey, that's not a gun. That looks awesome. Secondly, when you look at the, the, the engineering behind the gun, and when the original gun in, uh, is chambered in 45 ACP, now 9mm and 10mm, this center section here actually contains the action. So the blowback comes down and then comes down, which drops the muzzle moving around. Very clever design. And this whole box in the center fire versions or the pistol caliber versions is full of the action. Now, ours being 22 caliber, we don't have that. It's a straight blowback. So this is essentially empty. Uh, but they still maintain the same construction and solidity and the same design and look and feel. But that little design of holding the gun up and how you run it was a crucial thing. Um, the last thing was I like being different. I like engineering new solutions and the fact that everyone and his wife has got a AR style platform gun. Um, you know what, let's be different, see if it works. The biggest hurdle is to completely change your muscle memory on changing. If you go to a AR platform, again, I'll shoot my left hand, up, magazine down, your supporting hand is your magazine change, thread in magazine. So you're used to carrying a gun one hand that sort of way, which is why weight is always an issue, and then having to change this way, okay? And what I found was slow with that, and I tried to teach myself differently, is that if I had to do a mag change midway through a course of fire, which is quite common, I would change the mag, put it in, and then I would move my hand to its firing position before I shot. Now I tried to teach myself to put the magazine in, hold the magazine and shoot. And I just had problems. I couldn't get it right because I'm used to shooting arm out, down, shooting. To suddenly turn that into an in front with a 16 inch long barrel holding it right back here, your shooting platform's pretty poor. So I found mag change in, then changing, I was losing time to do that. And I couldn't, if I did, I couldn't teach myself otherwise. So for me in my mind, I thought the best thing was to have a shooting position we don't need to change shoot support. Okay, so, so in the Wanda Vector perspective, you hold the gun in, that's your shooting position. Okay, magazine change these are in and down this side. So my trigger hand is off, and arguably for sniper type long distance shooting, the trigger hand is reasonably important. But in terms of overall for practical shooting, your cheek weld is important, obviously, but your positioning of the barrel is important. So I found with the Vector, with a bit of practice, I can keep my uh, cheek weld on the gun and I can change without actually moving my head on the gun, which is hard on an AR when you are all the way around holding one hand. Now, so that was one of the crucial aspects of it. Um, and as we've gone on the last, I don't know, four or five weeks, six weeks, we tried different things with it and different ways to do it. And there's been some great little things that were quite useful. Mag resting, okay? You can mag rest on the 30 round magazine on these things. You can't mag rest in AR. It tends to cause jams because the angle of the magazine is not right to pick up onto the chamber. With the 30 round magazines that stick out a long way, I've got a lovely bipod um, and it works very well, which is a bit frustrating because I spent quite a lot of money and get some carbon fiber bipods I no longer need. Um, also with a 10 round magazine, it's flush the bottom of the gun anyway, so it works very well, which I've done in previous videos. The left-handed magazine changes. It's very quick, it really is. The longer magazine that you have means you have more of an angle to grab onto the magazine and, and feed it in. It does need a, flat, a flared um, mag well, if you ask me, which we will work with a couple of manufacturers, I'm sure, to make one of those, uh, which work very well. And it's an easy, easy fix, frankly. Um, just 3D print it, off you go. It does need one of those. Um, and it does need a couple of changes down to the fore end, uh, which I, we're going to be working on now as well. But like I said, Chris are bringing out some new fore end handguards for this, which would, would suit both 16 and 12 inch barrels. But that's it. Um, I've, the magazines turned up this year, this week. We shot several thousand rounds through them and I can't, can't smile, smile enough. It's been great fun. Um, we shot the first uh, Hawk competition, uh, Hawk mini rifle competition uh, last week. Uh, and I shot the vector for that one. Uh, we didn't film it. Um, mainly because we weren't sure it didn't work. Um, but with a win and senior for me, with the first time with a gun, we thought, okay, best film it now. So we're happy with that uh, to go through. So overall, uh, it's different. Um, I don't think everyone's gonna like the look of it. It's a very Marmite gun, as they say, love it or loathe it. But the good thing about guns is how they function. 
And in terms of the ergonomics, how this gun works, and how um, you can apply the ergonomics to the very UK specific form of practical mini rifle, because of the range we have, makes it a very interesting choice for people to try. So these all start become available soon. I believe Shield, the UK distributor for UK, has been instrumental in helping all this, getting the magazines in especially, and they will be shipping out guns to all kinds of people, I'm sure. Um, developments we do here will be in-house. Chris Mayer might pick them up, not sure, but we certainly will be developing those with a more competition style on it. But certainly out of the box, change a few visual things out of it, great gun, works very well. But for practical shooting, um, again, out of the box, it can work spectacularly well. Now, before we go out of the box, it's worthwhile mentioning my Smith & Wesson. Still a good starter gun, still the cheapest gun out there. It's 600 odd pounds now, give or take. To get to a competition ready on my one over the years, I spent another 600 quid on it. So this thing about a gun out of the box being competitive is a bit of a misnomer. Every gun out there needs some fettling. The DMK, for example, could do with a better firing pin. The Smith & Wesson needs a better firing pin. Um, for, the, for the Vector, it's going to be a, a firing pin and probably an extractor um, on the Smith & Wesson. Again, you can improve all these things as you can. All of them will shoot well out the box. But you want to be ultra competitive out the box, it does need some money. Um, you know, my Smith is a fairly average trigger. I put a 300 pound AR gold trigger in it. Brilliant gun. A brilliant, I'm now over the moon with it. But that still doubles the price of the gun pretty much once they're finished. Optics are down to what you want to spend money on. I've always gone multiple optics. And the people who shot at the last Hawk Mini Rifle Championship the other week uh, realise that. When you're shooting a target at one metre and then 100 metres, uh, your single scope, be it a Hawk or be it an aim point, isn't enough. Although some people did very well. Um, one of the guys who works here came third and he ran a standard, op, standard red dot, hawk op, uh, red dot with no magnification. So that's a personal choice. Anyway, I've dragged on, long video. Um, just to simply say that we're going to be now shooting the Chris Vector. We've got some more product available coming out for it. Um, with the combination of DMK, Chris and Shield, the UK distributor, are very supportive of what we're trying to do, which is great for the sport of practical mini rifle. So from now on, we'll start doing more stuff on these and doing some more stuff um, in terms of some skills choice as well. I uh, hope that's useful. Um, hope to see you out on the circuit. We start shooting again now. The Hawk Championship is borderline full already. Um, so be kind of, and that'll be coming out on TV in the next two weeks, I believe, on Sky. So uh, keep posting that. We'll obviously announce when that comes through. All right. Thanks for watching again. Any problems, questions, obviously give me a call. Uh, I'll, have, I'll have many comments down below. Um, talk to you soon. All right. Cheers.